bringing the wrath of God down in so many ways in so many places. Brother, well, we've seen it. Have y'all noticed in the past year gone by how the, the devil is moving in, yeah. in our country? Yeah. Not only our country, but other third world countries. Yeah. Yeah. Brother, the devil is having a heyday. Yeah. Uh, what a lot of Christians are sitting back and not realizing the devil is after this world. Yeah. He's not after yeah. just America. He's after yeah. the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The world. And before so many, he's going to get the world for a short period. Yeah. yeah. He's got time. God's got it all planned out. <laughs> yeah. What we as Christians are saved by the grace of God need to be doing is we need to be loving God and worshiping God and serving Him with yeah. the yeah. whole heart, yeah. not half our heart. Uh, if we put our heart into God as much as we do, as Brother Lawrence has said so many times, being intoxicated on the world, we'd be out the churches full of Yeah, yeah. Brother, let me tell you something. You know why you can't get to every sinner to come to church anymore? Come on now, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to get yeah, they are. But you know why the torment man? It's because... The backsliding Christian out there in the world living worse than some of they are living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And crooked. But anyhow, oh, that's the way it is. But I pray God bless you by being here this morning. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we better come all the way with God. Yeah. This half half pattern is serving God ain't gonna get it. God ain't smiling on him. Uh I, I believe God is uh he he'll come in the presence of where he's welcome. And I'll tell you something right now. Uh, God blessed us. God breathed upon us. And the devil don't like it. No. But I got news for the devil. I'm not here to worship the devil. I'm here to glorify God. Yeah. I'm here to glorify God. Yeah. I'm here to lift him up. Yeah. But this morning I want us all to come and ask you if you will. Let's come and take up our offer this morning. Let's all stand. May God bless us all. Okay. Yes,
And whenever they interview in a person where they come over to see them here, they always tell them, time's up, we got to move, we got to change. Thank you for being with us today, and we got to move on. And so everything is on the schedule. Now, this morning we realized uh, we uh, got uh, stirred. See, God stirred us this morning yeah. at 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, sir. God began to move. And I'll say this morning, if everybody sitting in this church had a really just humble down and obeyed the Lord, they'd do what God would have done here at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But when you got people that says, well, it ain't, it ain't going my way, it ain't doing like I wanted to, well then, I'll just clam up. Yeah. And let's God say, you're the hindrance. Yeah. You're the hindrance from God's yeah. service being what God wants to be. It's called quenching the Spirit of God. Mm. Anytime you quench the Spirit of God, you hinder God's work. And it takes a, a, a it takes a, a saved person to do that because a lost person don't know how to do that. But I want to share with you this morning, though, something this morning. I think it's high time that we get really serious with God and start, uh, uh, you know, taking this business of worshiping God and serving God seriously. And I want to go to some scriptures this morning that uh, is very familiar to some of you. And, and then maybe it may be an eye-opening to some of you. Maybe it'll be a heart opening to some of you. Maybe it'll help you to realize uh, what you need to do for God. It ain't what my brother and sister needs to do. It's what I need to do. Yeah, yeah. When I look in the mirror, I don't see my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. I see Bobby Blackburn. Yeah, and when right. you look in the mirror, you see who you're looking yeah, at too. Yeah, right. But you know, listen here. Uh, I, can't, uh, I can't go to heaven for you. And you can't go to heaven for me because God said, let him one work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Yeah. Most time we work it out with chewing gum and laughing and cutting up. It ain't that way. That ain't the way God meant it to be. Amen. God says work it out with fear and trembling. Yeah. And so I want to go to the Word of God and I want to show you something this morning that I believe that will help and encourage you. If you're here in this church this morning and you're lost, you need to be saved. Uh, uh, unless you do die in your sins and go to hell. If you're here in this church this morning and you made a false profession, that means that you're still lost. Yeah. Brother, you, there's such a thing as making a false possession but then getting no possession. Yeah. Uh, but see, so many times people come down to the altar and they'll, uh, 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 they'll go through the act and they'll go through the motion. But brother, in their heart, there's no change. Uh, the, see, uh, Brother Lawrence brings it out real clear. The only washing you got is not the heart and soul. It's the outside. Yeah, and brother, yeah. you can wash the outside all day long and all night long and the rest of your life. But that will not get you into heaven. Amen. Brother, that will get you straight into hell. Yeah. Brother, you're not saved by what you do. You're saved by what he done. What, he, what Jesus done on Calvary. Yeah. So I want to turn over to Hebrews. Yeah. God bless his precious word. And... Uh, We'll give God the glory over in Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. Thank God for the Word of God. Yeah. And uh, Amen. Hebrews chapter 12. And starting, and this is a, uh, believed to be the letters of Paul. He says in the sixth verse of 12, and God bless his precious word, he says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chastened. Now, I want to stop right there just a minute. Brother, the Bible says, whom the Lord loveth, he chastises. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're sitting in this church this morning, and you tell me you're saved, and you're living out in the world, and you're partaking of drugs, you're partaking of alcohol, and you're partaking of the clubs of the world, and you don't think nothing wrong with it, what you need to do is get saved. Yeah. Amen. Now, yeah, now listen, I'm no judge here this morning. I'm just saying, bless God, honey, God put it down right here. God chastises those He loves. He and if you want to hear what He loves us while we were yet sinners, the Bible says He died for us. Yeah. But I'm talking about a child of God. Yeah, Brother, if you don't have no biblical convictions about you, you need to get saved. Yeah. Because the Bible says the same Holy Ghost that come into your soul and heart the night you claim or the day you claim you got saved will lead you and guide you into all of God's pathways and righteousness. He will not lead you to go to the alcohol shed. He will not lead you to go to the outside street drug dealer. He will not lead you to go down to the to crystal pistols on Friday and Saturday night. He'll lead you to the house of God on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Yeah. And brother, listen, that's what's wrong with so many people. they got this uh, just enough of religion to make them miserable as a devil. Yeah. Honey, yeah. listen here. Honey, you ain't got
got to join your soul, and if you ain't got the desire and a, a zeal, honey, to serve God, worship God, you're backsliding. Yeah, look out. Say, so, preacher, you're judging. No, I ain't judging. You judge yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. For whom the Lord loveth, they chasten and scourge it. You know what that scourge is? Mean he puts stripes on you. Yeah. That's what that means. Yeah. Every son whom he receiveth, or daughter, when he's talking about son receiving, he's talking about daughters too to get saved. Yeah. If ye endure chastise, just chastising, God dealeth with you as with his sons. In other words, when God starts beating the devil out of you, that's letting you know you are his child. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. You tell me, bless God, you can go out here and you can live like a devil and you can cuss like a devil and you can go out here and drink your booze, drink and do your drugs, and God don't chastise you. You a ball based liar. You tell me you're saved. Right. Oh, but the devil just said, puts it in his pocket and smoke it. And I ain't promoting for promoting for it. Where's your brother, Paul? Get it, brother. There's too much of this half party that hey, serving God going on. Got people that come to church once every six months and think you've done God a favor. No, bless God, God done you a favor and not putting you in a hole somewhere. Right. Amen. Amen. It's serious. People's deceived, but you know how you deceive? You're deceived with them. With them. People make a statement and say, Preacher, I tell you. Mom and Daddy made me go to church when I was little, but I'm grown now. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to fly with the world. You're going to fly right in hell, too. Yeah. 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 And that's what I'm doing. I'm standing in this church, I'm standing in this aisle, trying to keep you out of hell. Yeah. 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 The Bible says, cry loud, spur not, lift up thy voices of trouble, and show my people their transgressions. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah yeah. 58 1. We got used to being backslidden. And then wonder why you can't get your relatives. Wonder why you can't get your friends saved. They ain't gonna get saved watching you, you hypocrite you. Get quiet, I don't care if it's I ain't up here playing church. I want to see people saved. There's poor people we've been calling out in prayer in this church. But they listen here. You may have people you know that you've been, you'd like to be saved. But I'll tell you what, when you get your heart right with God and you get in here and get dedicated to God and quit your play in church, quit your play in religion, you'll see God move. Mm -hmm. You think them people down there in Texas is playing this morning? You think them people down there is uh, uh, rejoicing and playing and laughing and joking about it? You think, hey, let me tell you something. I can tell you one thing. They didn't go to the Christian pistol the last few nights going by. Yeah, yeah. They can't even get in their home much less Christian pistol. Yeah, yeah. And I'm talking about the hell hole down to the Yeah, yeah. Can't come to the but let me tell you something. God, so if God don't wake America up, brother, America's doomed. Amen. Yeah. And you know why a lot of people don't ain't woke up this morning? Because you don't want to be woke up. Yeah. You're satisfied in your lustful way of living. You're satisfied in your sinful way of life. Yeah. You're satisfied. Some of you go sit back and watch your own children die and go to hell on your nose because of your hypocritical way of living. How do you tell a child to get right with God when you got a mom and daddy won't get right with God? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you tell a child to come on and go to church when they ain't seen you in church in six months? Mm -hmm. I ain't playing church here this morning, brothers and sisters. I'm serious as a heart attack. Amen. Some people get up and go to church once in a while and, 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 and be real religious while you're there. And walk out that door and can't wait to get home and get somewhere to get you an alcohol drink or get you a drug, something to get high on. We in a world that's uh, high, bless God, it makes these towers down here on three of them look short. Yeah. Right. Always got to have a high. Looking for that high. Well, I tell you, that high is taking some of them right out of here. Right, they say we got an epidemic of it right here in Gifford County, Randolph County. Yeah. 
Yeah. We got an epidemic of it right here in our country. Yeah. People are taking that last chance to get that last ha ha. And that last ha ha introduces them right straight to the gates of hell. Yeah. 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 Don't come to church and play religion. Don't come to church and be partially religious when you know in your heart you ain't right with God. Met a guy right up here at the store just a few months ago. Seen me coming, there he was in the grocery line, he couldn't run. Mm. <laughs> Boy, he looked like he'd rather look anywhere to see the preacher Bobby coming. <laughs> yeah. Boy, he started reaching down there, picking up some beans and picking up some cornflakes and all that to try to cover up that big old carton of beer. <laughs> <laughs> And then come to church on Sunday morning. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yeah. That's a hypocrite. That's a, a hypocrite, Brother Dean. Y'all know what a hypocrite is? That's a professing Professing to have them. You know in your heart you ain't got But anyhow, that's what a hypocrite is. And I'm going to read on here. I'm giving you the word of God this morning. And I ain't playing what I'm giving to you. I'm giving to you just like God giving to me. Amen. But he says right here, he says, if you endure chastisement of God, as you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastiseth not? But if you be without chastisement, wherefore all of the takers, then are you Bastards and not sons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. God said if you ain't chastised and you call yourself saved, you're bastards and not sons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what that means? You ain't God's child. You still belong to the devil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyhow, I'm telling you this morning, brothers and sisters, this is time to get serious with God. Amen. Now then, God chastises his children. Yeah. You go out here and live your life in a simple way after you leave this church. You're a hypocrite, and, and if God don't chastise you, you know what God just said you was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't call you that. God did. Mm -hmm. I'm just preaching what God told me. You said, preach, yeah. I wouldn't preach like that. Yeah. That's the reason God put me here and not you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But he says over here in Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and the sixth verse, if they which are saved, Listen to me, what you're saying. If they shall fall away to renew they crucify the, to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Y'all know what that means. Every backslider that gets out of fellowship with God goes back out in the world and starts living in the world, acting like the world, talking like the world, but take it to the world. God says, you bring Jesus Christ that you said saved you to an open shame. Yeah. 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 To an open shame. In other words, you crucify him when you're in a prayer in your own way of living, in your, your own daily attitude and walk that you're walking. And what I will tell you this morning, I hope this sticks in your mind. Every backslider, get me now, I said backslider. Every backslider walks out of fellowship with God. It's, so to speak, walking out there, taking the blood of Jesus and walking on your feet, under yeah. your feet, under yeah. your feet, under your feet, every step you take. Yeah. And all the time you won't walk on it is when you get off of it. Yeah. And all the time you get off of it is when you repent and get your heart right with God and say, God help me. Amen. Now you get that letter stick in your mind every day you walk back street. You say, preacher, I ain't back street. You either front or the back street or you ain't never been saved. Yeah. I ain't playing with you. You either in fellowship with God, if you're in fellowship with God, why is it always you don't ever know how to get to the house of God? Now, I ain't talking about people working. 
I ain't talking about people working now. I know sometimes you've got to work and I understand that. I'm talking about people that just come to think I do God a favor. I do Shady Road a favor. I come visit with them. I'm telling you, you need to get serious with God and get your heart right with God. Because what's happening right down here could be right here in North Carolina in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> Them people never had no thought in their mind that they'd be where they at today. How many times as many hurricanes hit this country? People have got flooded, but there's over 100,000. 100,000 residents yeah. down there that's lost. Yeah. And people in centers don't even know what they're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And just a few days before the hurricane hit, they was had a good home, nice automobiles, yeah. nice bank accounts, nice everything. But today they're crying and telling the news reporter, all we got is what we call on our back, and it's wet. Yeah. It's wet. Yeah. It's wet. Thank God for these people that are stepping in there. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad that we are part of the hearts of hands to help. We left this church this past Wednesday night. And I picked up Brother Greg on the internet. And he looked right up in that camera right towards everybody. And he says, people, this is what it's all about. He says, we got 40 volunteers helping us. Helping us put this stuff together. Because they're going to have a truck on the road the next morning. Heading to Texas. Bass Pro Company. Bass Shop. Donated 80 boats. 80 boats <laughs> to give to the down there to help them out. Yeah. People stopping everything that's got something, taking their boats and heading down there to help out. People is helping people. People is coming together. Our president has down there for the second time walking and crying with those people and seeing what kind of shape they're in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Says people can't fix it. The federal government ain't going to be able to fix it. Red Cross ain't going to be able to fix it. All the helping hands and helping hearts ain't going to fix this. Mm -mm. He said, we need a we need yeah. miracle of God. Yeah. And he said, please, everybody that knows how to pray, let tomorrow be a special mm -hmm. day of prayer for our country and their precious souls in Texas. Because God turns his back on us. You listen to what I'm saying. Right out there in the Atlantic Ocean right now. He said, but they said a while ago before I left the house. If it gets in that hot water off the Gulf Coast down here. Yeah, yeah. It says it could yeah. be a Category 4. Yeah. It's centered for either North Carolina or the Keys of Florida. Yeah. Anywhere in that area. Yeah. Next week, if, it, if, it, if it, yeah. God don't have us on there, yeah. we could be sitting in the same yeah. shape. Yeah. Now, come on, people. Do we need to play, do we need to play church? You ever sit in the house of God and go to sleep? No. <laughs> You ever sit in the house of God and act like you ain't hear nothing? I've got ears. You better wake up, church. Yeah. You better wake up. You, you hear this morning and you've been saved, you backstayed on God, you need to get on that altar and do some repentance. Yeah. You need to get up there and beg God to forgive you, which God will forgive you. Yeah. God with a made up mind, a made up heart. You come with a sincere heart and a made up mind, God will forgive you. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins to Jesus, he's faithful just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Is that preacher? I hear you, I can't. I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. Then here's what you gotta look forward to. First Corinthians 5 and 5. God said he would deliver such a one. You don't want to heed the word of God. You don't want to heed the message. You don't want to do the right thing. You want to stay in a backslidden condition. You want to drink your booze. You want to go to your nightclubs and be popular with the world. You want to do your drugs and be popular with the drug world. You say, preacher, I have this and I have that. I know these drugs are here for pain. I understand that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about these best guys, honey, they can't go through a day without... Uh, Snipping something up their nose. Uh, Tell it, brother. Uh, There's more gasoline sold now than I've ever had in the time of history. You know why? Because they take gasoline and put up their nose to where when they breathe that mess up their nose, honey, it gives them a longer high and it stays with them longer. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You say, how do you know that, preacher? I said, bless God, I didn't come out from under a load of cash. Yeah. 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 Tell it, brother. 
I'm 74 years old. I've been around the building two or three times. Yeah. I've been out behind the barn a few times. Yeah. And got wood for me. I got my education out behind the barn. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking the little joints. I'm not talking about pot joints. I'm talking about uh, brown paper rolled up. Yeah. I'm talking about. Uh, to back the record back. Yeah. I'm talking about a long cigarettes if we could sneak them out. Yeah. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about, but God says, wherefore I'll turn a such a one over to the devil. You want to keep going down that road you're going down? You want to be turned over to the devil? Watch out. It's coming. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be a And this is talking about backsliders. You won't heed the word of God. Which God wish you, God rather you would, I rather you would, and Christians rather you would. But if you don't take heed this morning, something's wrong. It don't surprise me if you get out of this service this morning, you don't get a phone call. Somebody saying, Brother Bobby, Brother Bobby, what you preach this morning, we're experiencing it right now. We just got that phone call. I got a sister sitting in this church this morning. I went to the church tonight. Her little sister had been born and raised with her. Laid over in that church in Trinity. Beautiful young middle-aged girl. Laid over because she went out and she was going to take it one more time. Yeah. One more time and it rings out in my ears. One sister Rondo was sitting there on that front pew and she was hollering and talking to her voice. Why? Why did she do it? Why did she go back? That rings in my ear when I hear stuff like this. Her soul was crying out. Why did she go back? She went back because of that carnal devil in the flesh. Wanted that high. Wanted that high. Just like the carnal devil in your place this morning. You want that high. You want that high. Hear it. I hope you hear it when you walk out of this church. You want that high. You say, preacher, I don't like it. Well, the devil only does so get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? You want to ignore it? That's your priority. You want to turn your back on it? That's your will. That's, your, that's, your, that's what you want to do. But I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. I'm not trying to scare nobody this morning. I'm just saying what that book says right there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, as if God taught me to cry loud and stern, I'll lift up my voice as a trumpet. God says over in Timothy chapter 4, verses 1. Yeah. Be instant in season, out of season, exalt with all of something. Amen. Praise the word! Praise the word! Yeah. Amen. Faith comes by hearing here by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. Yeah. First John chapter two verses one and two. Yeah, my little Praise children, Lord. I'm talking to you, church, through the word of God. Amen. My little children, these things right under you yeah. that you sin not. Yeah. It ain't God's will that we go out here and live in the world. It ain't God's will that we go out here and will it for the city. Yeah. And walk on the blood of Jesus like that. No. Would you let some monstrous devil take your son no. or take one of your children out there on the street no. and stomp it till the blood flowed out of its body? And then turn around and walk in it and stomp in it and stomp in it. Somebody be getting a gun, Bubba. Y'all know somebody be getting a gun. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? We do it to the Son of God every day, every moment. We yeah, back to it all yeah. Time. Yeah. Are you sure you heard what I seen read there in the scriptures? Hebrews six and six. Yeah. One of these days you're gonna walk it one time too many. Yeah, yeah. God's gonna say that's enough. Get off of me. You're gone. Yeah. God said he'd cut you off in that without a remedy. Hard in your heart. Hard in your neck. Step in your neck. God said he'd cut you off. You know, it's such a thing as causing God's deadline. And you cross God's deadline about less than 24 hours. Somebody's going to be calling and say, you did. You're gone. You done crossed it. I preached it. I seen it. I witnessed it, Brother John. Amen. Young man come to my house one evening about 5 o'clock on Wednesday. Said, Brother Bobby, I had to come down here and tell you I'm sorry for leaving the church like I did. But he said, Brother Bobby, I've crossed God's deadline and I'm fixing to leave this world. He 
Y'all realize how I feel standing there listening to him beside that truck? I said, oh my God, no. I says, maybe not. He looked at me with ice eyes. His eyes was as cold as ice black as I ever seen in my whole life. It's like it come out of a preacher. He looked at me with them cold ice eyes and said, Brother Bobby, I've crossed God's deadline. I'm fixing to leave here. That same night, after the midnight hour, at one o'clock in the morning, he was dead. I preached his funeral to the two a couple of days later. You hear me, church? It ain't games and fun playing here. We what we show I worship and I'm preaching you the truth. I'm trying to keep somebody out of hell. I'm trying to keep somebody from coming to an early grave. I believe those I stand here, there's people that's went out in the early grave because of their disobedience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe that. God sends you in short days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to cross God's deadline, you may be sitting in this church this morning and you just right on the verge of making that last step the wrong way. And Brother God says, come on. Prince of the Five Fives will walk up and slap you right in the face. God says, well, before I turn to such a one over the devil, the destruction of this flesh, it's just spirit will go on to be with the Lord. And then God says, if you without chastisement, you don't belong to God's story. Right? Praise I will never hit bow and never I close. Praise never hit bow and never I close. God's a merciful God and God's a forgiving God. I will ask you, church, how many here you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you saved by the grace of God? Let's see your hand. Thank you. Take them down. As far as I know, everybody in the church raised your hand. Now, how many sitting here you say, preacher? Preacher, I know I'm not where I need to be with God, and I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to let the devil deceive me. I know I'm not where I need to be with God. Preacher, would you pray for me? Slip up a hand right now for prayer. God bless you. God bless you. All those who lifted their hand right now, and all of you around, pray. You that lifted your hand, do you, are you concerned enough that you'll do more and lift your hand? Will you get up out of your seat and walk up here around an old-fashioned altar and say, God, I need him. God, I need him. God, please help me. Will you come right now? Get up and come. God bless you. God bless you. Maybe you're sitting here this morning. You say, Preacher, I'm here and I've been saved. But I know I ain't where I need to be with God. Preacher, please pray for me. Once you get up and come, you don't have to raise your hand. Just get up and come on. Come on, let's meet and meet with God. Let's meet and meet with God. All of us. All of us this morning. Preacher, I want to walk closer to God. Preacher, I really want to walk closer to God. God says you draw an eye to me and I'll draw an eye to you. And brother, let's pray and trust God. Let's pray. Who wants to walk that closer walk with God? Come on, we need prayer, brothers. Brothers and sisters, we need prayer. This, this church needs to get stronger and get closer to God. As God told Solomon over there in the book of uh, Colossians, uh, he says, be strong, build a house, but be strong and do it. Church, let's be strong in the Lord. Let's be strong in our prayer life. Let's be strong in our love for each other. Let's be strong in our dedication and our faithfulness to the house of God. Be strong in it in these last days before the Lord steps out and calls us out of here. It's here. Anybody else you want to come? Anybody? All hearts clear. You know, if you come this morning, you gather around this old altar, and you got it right with God, I believe we'll see you in church more. I believe we'll see you here, unless you pop it in hand. Because sure, playing church days is over with. Yeah. Playing church days is over with. Turn your back on the world. Turn your back on the crystal pistol. Turn your back on the Hell holds the world yeah. and say, I'm going, but I'm going with Jesus. Yeah. I'm going with Jesus. It takes a real Christian to go with Jesus. 
any old dead fish can float down the stream. Yeah. But it takes a lot of them to swim up the stream. Amen. So yeah. die out to the world this morning and come alive in Jesus. Yeah. And let's walk and serve God and be where we ought to be and serve God like we ought to serve God. Amen. Brother, listen, I love you this morning. And that's the reason God laid on my heart. Stand on this book. Y'all know we're supposed to have communion. I didn't know that until we got up here and got started. But next Sunday, by the grace of God, we'll have communion. If the Lord's will, he'll help call us out of here. But just coming to you tonight, now we got a business meeting at 7 o'clock. And, and I, I wrote down on my book there. I'm going to do my best, Brother Saul, not to miss it. I didn't intend to miss that one. I just walked without it. I don't know what it is, too, Brother. Brother Junior called me about 30 minutes after he took the car home. Mm -hmm. uh, the time I get cleaned up and get there, y'all will be full. But anyhow, we're we'll trying not to miss the next one. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you something, church. Tonight at 6 o'clock, we ain't closing the doors on this church at 6 o'clock tonight. We ain't going to be one of them that says, we'll just go do a little on Sunday morning yeah. to get it the rest of the week. Yeah. I love the Lord, and I believe God says in Hebrews 10 25, forsake not. Yeah. Don't let nothing hinder you from the house of God yeah. unless you're prophetically hindered. Yeah. Yeah. If you're prophetically hindered, that's understandable. Yeah. But you get it up, you get up and get yourself ready and you come on. Come when you feel like it and come when you don't feel like it. Yeah. I do that so many times. I know others that does it too. These people come to church when they're physically sick and they can't hardly stand it, but they come to the church. Yeah. All right, God bless you. We love you. Hope you have a good dinner today. Yes, oh, yeah. Thank you, brother. All right, ushers, if y'all will, come up here. This is our special day. We take up an offering for parts of hands. Brother, if you see what I've seen, and I tried to post it where everybody could see it, brother, what's going on up there, brother, we need to help them because the warehouses is getting real slim. Giving them everything they can to help them poor people. Hundreds of thousands need help. God said he blesses a cheerful gift. Yeah.